Hi, my name is John. Welcome to SysEng Quick. This is the first in a series of videos on learning Ansible in 2024. Ansible is one of the most widely used automation platforms in the world. It's the primary tool I use in my day job and a highly useful skill to develop. Ansible connects to remote servers, typically over SSH, and performs tasks based on user instruction in the form of Ansible playbooks. There is often no programming knowledge required to create playbooks, though Ansible is highly extensible if you know Python. Ansible has a CLI interface. There are GUI interfaces for running Ansible playbooks such as AWX, also known as Ansible Tower, and Semaphore. But for now, we'll be sticking with the command line. That means you'll need some familiarity with using a terminal. Ansible can perform tasks on Windows machines, but Ansible itself will not run on Windows. To use Ansible on Windows, I recommend using WSL. There are no special requirements for Linux or Mac OS. Ansible requires Python. You'll need a compatible Python version before you can start. Ansible has a six month release cycle, and as of April 2024, the current version is Ansible Core 2.16. 2.17 is expected to be released next month. Around version 2.10, Ansible split off parts that were previously included into Ansible collections. It was easier to maintain a release schedule with a smaller code base. This also frees up maintainers of the additional components from the Ansible release schedule. They can put out updates more or less frequently as befits their requirements. It also puts less burden on the end user. If you never have any need to configure a Cisco router, then you don't have to install any Python libraries that would be required to make that work. All in all, it's a slight reduction in convenience for an increase in overall efficiency. So when we're talking about Ansible as a tool, we're talking about Ansible Core. There is an Ansible Python package that includes Ansible Core and a selection of things that used to be part of Ansible by default, but I don't recommend using it. I think it's better to go with a minimal install and only add what you actually need. I've brought up the Python compatibility matrix from the Ansible website. Ansible typically requires Python in two places, the place you run Ansible, also known as the control node, and the place where Ansible tasks get run, for example, the remote Linux server. The Python requirements aren't the same in both places. Not every server will have the latest version of Python installed, so the requirements for the remote servers are fairly modest. Unless your remote target server is end of life or late in the cycle rel, it probably already meets the Python requirements. The control node Python requirements are more strict. Ansible supports the most recent three releases of Python at the time of the Ansible core release. I'm using Debian Bookworm under WSL, so let's check if we have a compatible version of Python by running Python 3-V. We have Python 3.11, which is compatible with the latest Ansible core 2.16, so we're good to proceed. If you don't have a compatible Python 3 version, you'll need to install it. Consult the Python website if you need help with that. For most Linux distributions, the package is probably named Python 3. For virtual environment support, you'll also need Python 3-VN. Containerization is a great way to ensure your environment. In the next video, we'll set up a dev container and install Ansible there. You can wait for that episode if you don't want to install anything on your system. Let's start by creating a new virtual environment. We'll run python3-mvm.vn. 
we can enter our new virtual environment with source.vm bin activate. Now we should be able to install Ansible with Python 3-m pip install ansible-core. This will install the latest version of Ansible Core that supports your Python version, which in my case is Ansible 2.16. Let's see if we can run Ansible now. If we do ansible-version, it looks pretty good. Let's try running a command. We'll do ansible localhost -m ping. This command tells Ansible to run the ping module on localhost. It's not the same as a network ping, more of a way to check that Ansible can reach the remote host and everything is working. We can see that it's working because we received a pong re reply from the remote system, which in this case isn't actually remote, but it does prove that Ansible is working. So that's a good start. That's where we're going to cut this first episode. I hope it's been helpful. I'd really appreciate it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps out the channel. In the next video, we'll set up that dev container so we can ensure the consistency of our environment. Thanks for watching. See you next time.